Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O heavenly King, comforter, spirit of truth, or everywhere present, fill us all things, treasury of blessing, and giver of life. Come and abide in us. Cleanse us of every stain and save our souls. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and in the greatest of ages of our men. All holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. shall declare thy praise. O Lord, why are they multiplied that afflict me? Many rise up against me. Many say unto me, many say unto my soul, there is no salvation for him in his God. But thou, O Lord, art my helper, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all who without cause are mine enemies. The teeth of sinners hast thou broken. Salvation is of the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. I laid me down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord will help me. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, nor chasten me in thy wrath, for thine arrows are passing with me, and thou hast laid thy hand heavily upon me. There is no healing in thy flesh in the face of thy wrath, and there is no peace in thy bones in the face of thy sins. For my my iniquities are risen higher than my head, as a heavy burden have they pressed heavily upon me. 
My bruises are becoming noise and then corrupt in the face of my folly. I have been wretched and utterly bowed down until the end. All the day long I went with downcast face, for my loins are filled with mocking, and there is no healing in my flesh. I am afflicted and humbled exceedingly. I have bored from the groaning of my heart. O oh Lord, before thee is all my desire, and my groaning is not good for me. My heart is troubled, my strength hath failed me, and the life of mine eyes even this is not with me. My friends and my neighbors drew nigh over against me and stood, and my nearest of kin stood afar off. And they that sought after my soul used violence, and they that sought evils for me spake vain things, and craftinesses all the day long did they meditate. But as for me, like a deaf man, I heard them not, and was as a speechless man that openeth not his mouth. And I became as a man that feareth not, and that hath in his mouth no reproves. For in thee have I hoped, O Lord, thou wilt hearken unto me, O Lord my God. For I said, Let none of my enemies rejoice over me. Yea, when my feet were shaken, those men spake boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, and I will take heed concerning my sin. But mine enemies live, and are made stronger than I. And they that hated me unjustly are multiplied. They that render me evil for good stand of me, because I pursued goodness. <coughs> Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord, and my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord, and my salvation. O God, my God, unto thee I rise early at dawn. My soul hath thirsted for thee. How often hath my flesh longed after thee, and I am barren, and untrodden, and unwatered. So in the sanctuary have I appeared before thee to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than lives. My lips shall praise thee. So shall I bless thee in my life, and in thy and in thy name will I lift up my hands. As with marrow and fatness let my soul be filled, and with lips rejoicing shall my mouth praise thee. If I remembered thee on my bed, at the dawn I meditated on thee. For thou art become my helper, in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. But as for these in vain have they sought after my soul, they shall go into the, ne the nethermost parts of the earth, they shall be surrendered unto the edge of the sword. Portions for foxes shall they be, but the king shall be glad in God. Everyone shall be praised that swear by him, for the mouth of them is stopped that speak unjust things. At the dawn I meditated on thee, for thou art become my helper, in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand hath been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. O Lord God of my salvation, by day have I cried, and by night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, bow down thine ear unto my supplication, for filled with evils is my soul, and my life unto Hades hath gone nigh. I am counted with them that go down into the pit, and become a man without help, free among the dead, like the bodies of the slain that sleep in the grave, and thou remembers no more, for they are cut off from thy hand. They laid me in the lowest pit of darkness, and in the shadow of death, against me as thine anger made strong, and all thy billows hast stumbled upon me. Thou hast removed my friends afar from me, they have made me an abomination unto themselves. I have been delivered up, and have not come forth, mine eyes are grown weak from poverty. I have cried unto thee, O Lord, the whole day long. I stretch out my hands unto thee, nay, for the devil thou art wonders. Or shall physicians raise them up that they may give thanks unto thee? Nay, shall any in the grave tell of thy mercy and of thy truth in that destruction? Nay, shall thy wonders be known in that darkness and thy righteousness in that land that is forgotten? But as for me unto thee, O Lord, have I cried, and in the morning shall my prayer come before thee. Wherefore, O Lord, dost thou cast off my soul and turnest thy face away from me? A poor man am I in the troubles from my youth, yea, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Thy furies have passed upon me, and thy terrors have sorely troubled me. They came round about me like water all the day long. They come to me about together. Thou hast removed afar from me, friend and neighbor, and mine acquaintances because of my misery. O Lord God of my salvation, by day of my pride, and by night before thee, let my prayer come before thee. Bow down thine ear unto my supplication. Bless the Lord of my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul, and forget not all that he hath done for thee. Who is gracious unto all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who fulfilleth thy desire with good things. Thy youth shall be renewed as the eagles. <clears throat> the Lord performeth deeds of mercy and executeth judgment for all them that are wrong. He hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, the things that he hath willed. 
compassionate and merciful as the Lord, long suffering and plenteous in mercy. Not unto the end will he be angry, neither unto eternity will he be wrong. Not according to our iniquities hath he dealt with us, neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from the earth, the Lord hath made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father hath compassion upon his son, so hath the Lord had compassion upon them that fear him. For he knoweth whereof we are made, yet remembered that we are dust. As for man, his days are as the grass, as the flower of the field, so shall he blossom forth. For when the wind is passed over, then shall it be gone, and no longer will it know the place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity, upon them that fear him. And his righteousness is upon the sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath prepared his throne, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, O his angels, mighty in strength, that perform his word, to hear the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. In every place of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, hear my prayer, give ear unto my supplication, and thy truth hearken unto me in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified, for the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath humbled my life down to the earth, he hath sat me in darkness as those that have been long dead. And my spirit within me has become despondent. Within me my heart is troubled. I remember days of old, I meditated on all thy works, I pondered on the creations of thy hands. I stretched forth my hands, and to thee my soul first adapted to thee like a waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord, my spirit hath fainted away. Turn not thy face away from me, lest I be likened to them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for in thee have I put my hope. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for in thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from mine enemies, O Lord, and to thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness, for thy name's sake, O Lord, shalt thou quicken me. In thy righteousness shalt thou bring my soul out of affliction, and in thy mercy shalt thou utterly destroy mine enemies. And thou shalt cut off all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Hearken unto me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Hearken unto me, O Lord, in thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God, O our God and our hope. Glory to thee. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the God. Lord have mercy. Peace of the whole world, the good state of the holy churches of God, and the union of all, let us pray to the God. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and those who with faith, reverence, and fear of God enter therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Our Father and Metropolitan Saba, the Honorable Presbytery, the Diaconate in Christ, all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Our country, its presidents, civil authorities, and our forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city and every city and countryside, Faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Helpful seasons, abundance of the fruits of the earth, and peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Travelers by sea, by land, and by air, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, <coughs> danger, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Calling to remembrance over all, for the Immaculate, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, and all the saints, most holy, and of ourselves, and each other, all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. Unto thee are due all glory, honor, and worship. 
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. God is the Lord, and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, and call upon his holy name. God is the Lord, and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All nations come to see him out, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. God is the Lord, and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. This is the Lord's doing, it is marvelous in our eyes. God is the Lord, and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. When the stone was sealed by the Jews, and the soldiers were guarding thy most pure body, how did the rise on the third day of Savior, granting light to the world? For it was a heavenly powers cried aloud unto thee, O giver of life, glory to thy resurrection, O Christ. Glory to thy kingdom, glory to thy providence. O thou who alone art the mother of mankind. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thy pure image to be venerate, O good one. Asking forgiveness of our sins, O Christ our God. For by thine own will, Thou didst ascend the cross in thy body to save thy creatures from the bondage of the enemy. Thou hast verily filled all with joy since thou didst come, O our Savior, to save the world. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Exceeding glory is beyond the power of thought are thy mysteries, O Theotokos, for being sealed in purity and preserved in virginity. Thou must acknowledge to be in very truth the Mother who did bring forth a true God. Wherefore entreat him to save our souls. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance are all holy, immaculate, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, most holy, and ourselves, and each other. Call our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. Thine is the might, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The soldiers who kept watch over thy grave, O Savior, became as dead men. He came as dead from the shining of the appearing of the angel, who told the good tidings of the resurrection to the angels. Thee, therefore, do we glorify, O remover of corruption, and to thee do we bow, O thou who didst rise from the grave, O thou our only Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou wast nailed upon the cross willingly, O merciful one, and thou wast placed in a grave like one who is dead, O giver of life, trampling the pride of death, O mighty one, for because of the for because of thee, the gatekeepers of Hades did tremble. O thou didst raise the dead with thee for, from eternity, for thou alone art the lover of mankind, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. As Gabriel cried, as Gabriel cried unto thee, Hail, O Virgin, with that cry did the Lord of all become incarnate in thee, O holy ark, as spake the righteous David. 
and thou wast revealed as more spa as more spacious than the heavens, and that thou bore thy creator. Wherefore, glory, glory to him who abode in thee, glory to him who came from thee, glory to him who through thy birth giving hath set us free. Verily the women did did proceed to the grave early, where they beheld an angelic scene, and did tremble. And when the grave shone forth with life, they were struck with astonishment. Wherefore they returned to the disciples, and did preach the resurrection, saying, Verily Christ hath invaded Hades, for he alone is the powerful and mighty one, and he raised with him all those who were corrupt. And with the power of his cross he removed the fear of condemnation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Thou wast verily nailed upon the cross, O life of all, and wast numbered among the dead, O deathless Lord. Thou didst, ra thou didst rise after three days, O Savior, and didst raise Adam from corruption. Wherefore the heavenly powers shouted to thee, O giver of life, glory to thy passion, O Christ, glory to thy resurrection, glory to thy condescension, O thou alone, the lover of mankind, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. O Mary, the reverend abode of the Lord, lift us who have fallen in the abyss of evil despair, trespasses, and sorrows, for thou didst give salvation to sinners. Thou art a helper and a strong intercessor, and dost save thy servants. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The company of the angels was amazed when they beheld me numbered among the dead. Yet thyself, O Savior, destroyed the power of them, and with thee raising up them, and releasing all men from hell. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Wherefore, O women and disciples, dreaming of sweet smelling spices with your tears of pity, the radiant angel within the circle were cried unto the myrrh-bearing women. Behold the grave and understand, for the Savior is risen from the tomb. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Very early in the morning did the murmuring women run lamenting unto thy tomb. But an angel came to warn them, saying, The time for lamentation is past. We come, but announce unto the apostles the resurrection. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The Murphy women mourned as bearing spices they drew near thy tomb, O Savior. But the angel spake unto them, saying, Why number he the living among the dead, in that he is God, he is risen from the grave. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We adore the Father, as also the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Trinity in one essence, crying with the seraphim. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O Lord, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And that thou didst bear the giver of life, O Virgin, thou didst redeem Adam from sin, and didst give to Eve joy in place of sadness. And he who was incarnate of thee, both God and man, hath restored to life those who had fallen therefrom. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to the O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to the O God. O our God and our hope, glory to thee. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, and 
mercy on us and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance are all holy, the immaculate, most blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, all the saints, most holy Theotokos, and ourselves, saint others, all our life unto Christ our God. To thee, O Lord. mankind. Unto thee we ascribe glory, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. The repentance of the thief gained in paradise by stealth, and the sighing of the origin of barren women proclaims the glad tidings that thou hast risen, O Christ, and hast bestowed upon the world thy great mercy. O Lord, to thee in my sorrows do I cry, hear thou my cry of pain. Verily, the divine desire shall be without delay upon the people of the wilderness, for that they have come out of the vain world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, glory and honor become the Holy Spirit, as they become the Father and the Son. Wherefore do we praise the triune, one in might? O God, since thou hast raised me to the hills of thy laws, Shed brightly thy light of virtue upon me, that I may praise thee. O Lord, hold me fast with thy right hand. Keep me and preserve me, lest the fire of sin consume me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, all creation together is regenerated by the Holy Spirit, and it returns to its former being. For he is co omnipotent with the Father and the Word. My soul did rejoice with those who say, Let us go into the courts of the Lord. My heart was exceedingly glad. Great fear shall be in the house of David, where the seat shall be set, and all the tribes and tongues of the earth shall be judged. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Verily, it is meet to offer glory, might, and power to the Holy Spirit, as to the Father, and to the Son, for the Trinity is one in substance, not in person. Now will I arise, say the Lord, I will set myself for salvation, I will make no tarry therein. Now will I arise, say the Lord, I will set myself for salvation, I will make no tarry therein. The words of the Lord of your words, now will I arise, say the Lord, I will set myself for salvation, I will make no tarry therein. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy art thou, O our God, who restest in the holy, and unto thee we ascribe glory. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise you, God, and his saints. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. That we may be accounted worthy to hear the Holy Gospel, let us beseech the Lord our God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. It is done, stand upright, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all, and to thy spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to be O Lord, glory to thee. Let us attend. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, Doors being shut where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house. Thomas was with them. The doors were shut. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be to you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, you have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. Thy cross of the adore of Christ, and thy holy resurrection we praise, praise and glorify. For thou art our God, and we know none other beside thee, and we call upon thy name. O come, all ye faithful, let us adore Christ's holy resurrection. For lo, through the cross of joy coming to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us sing his resurrection, for in that he endured the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me before you from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before thee. But thou mightest be justified in thy words, and to God, and thou art struggled. For behold, I was conceived in iniquity, and in sins, and in other damage. For behold, thou hast loved the truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with this up, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made white like as snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones of the one day shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy spirit from my church. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and let thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hast desired sacrifice, I had given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. The sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit, a heart that is broken, and humble God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and my good pleasure for the Zion and of the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation, and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer both the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Open to me the doors of repentance. Oh, no. 
Theodore the soldier, Theodore the general, Minas the wonder worker, and Mitrophon and John of China, are the hero martyrs Ignatius the god bearer of Antioch, are Alampos and Eleftherios, of Valerian the new martyr of the Soviet yoke, and Luke the surgeon and confessor, of the holy, glorious, great women martyrs, Thecla, Barbara, Anastasia, Catherine, Kyriaki, Potini, Marina, Paraskeva, and Irene, Thea the catechist in China, the twice martyr, the new martyrs, Grand Duchess Elizabeth and Barbara of the Soviet yoke, of our venerable and god bearing fathers who shone in the ascetic light, Romeus and Anthony the Great of Egypt, John Cassian the Roman, Benedict of Nursia, John of Damascus, Sabbas the Sanctified, Brendan the Voyager, Columba of Iona, Heaven of Glendalo, Bede the Venerable, Seraphim of Sorab, Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain, Herman of Alaska, Porphyrios of Capso Calivia, and Paisios of Mount Athos, of the Holy Venerable Women Monastics, Brigida of Kildare, and Melia Macrina the Betrothed, Allah of Rome, Marana and Kira of Syria, Jahdiv of Paris, Asiani the hymnographer, Green Chrysovalantu, great missionary saints, Nina the Enlightener of Georgia, Cyril and Methodius the Enlightener of the Slavs, and Nicholas of Japan, great kings and god crowned rulers, Constantine the Great and his mother Helena, Theodosius the Great, Theodora the Restorer of the Icons, Olga and Vladimir of Rus, Amara, Queen of Georgia, Simeon the Murgusher, First Orthodox King of Serbia, Oswald of Northumbria, and Olaf of Norway, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of the venerable Zechariah the Recluse, Artemon, Bishop of Seleucia, the new hero martyr Parthenios, Patriarch of Constantinople, whose memory we celebrate today, and of all the saints, we beseech thee, O most merciful Lord, hearken unto the petitions of us sinners, and make our supplications unto thee. And have mercy upon us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Through mercy and compassion. Love for mankind, of thine only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy and good and life giving Spirit, now endeavoring unto ages of ages. Amen. The unsubscribed word of God became, the uncircumscribed word of God became circumscribed, taking flesh from the Ephesus, and he has restored the sullied image to its ancient glory, filling it with the divine beauty. This, our salvation, we confess in deed and word, and we depict it in the holy icons. Enlightened by this mystery of God's providence, the divinely inspired prophets foretold it of old, and they did this for our sakes, who see the fulfillment of the ages. Receiving through this mystery divine knowledge, we know one Lord and God, glorified in three persons, and Him alone we worship. We have one faith, one baptism, and we are clothed in Christ. This, our salvation, we confess in deed and word, and we depict it in the holy icons. On March 24th, in the Holy Orthodox Church, we commemorate Venerable Zachariah the Recluse and Artemon, Bishop of Seleucia. On this same day, the first Sunday of the fast, we make the remembrance of the restoration of the holy and venerable icons, which took place through the ever-memorable sovereigns of Constantinople, Michael and his mother Theodora, during the Patriarchate of St. Methodius, the Confessor. I rejoice as I see them fitting reverence, the icons formerly unfitting vanished. This restoration was accomplished in the year 843. Theodora's husband was an iconoclast. After his death, Theodora venerated an icon of the Theotokos in front of Patriarch Methodius. The other faithful in the church did the same, venerating all the icons, considering them to be representations of their original elements not idols. Theodora, Theodora prayed to God to forgive her husband during the first week of Great Lent, and on the first Sunday of the fast she led the way in hanging up the icons to adorn the churches. O invariant icon of the Father, through the intercessions of thy holy confessors, have mercy on us. Amen. O Israel, having passed through the death of the Red Sea, on a moistened feet, defeated the powers of Amalek in the wilderness. By the hands of Moses, stretched in the form of a cross, 
The church of Christ rejoiceth in thee, crying unto thee, Thou, o Lord, art my strength, my stay, and my refuge. When the church saw thee elevated on the cross, O Son of Justice, she stood in her array, shouting to thee, and is me, glory to thy power, O Lord. Thou, my Lord, didst come as light to the world, a holy light, turning those who praise thee away from the dismal folly. The church haileth thee, O Lord, crying, I will sacrifice to thee with the voice of praise, purified from the vileness of Satan, by the blood which shaped from thy sight because of thy compassion. The Abramite youths in the furnace in the land of Persia burned with the fervor of true worship more than with the fire. Crying, blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, O Lord. We praise, we bless, and we worship the Lord. When Daniel stretched his hands in the pit, he closed the mouths of the devouring lions, and the youths lovers of true worship, when they girded themselves with virtue. Quench the power of our crying. Bless the Lord, all oh, his words. Theotokos, mother of the light, let us honor and magnify in song. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoice in God, my Savior. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without corruption cherish not the wind, and art truly fatal to all those behind thee. We are to regard the holiness of his handmaidens, to behold from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without corruption bearest not the word, and thy truly pale told those we magnify thee. For he that is mighty hath magnified thee, and holy is his name, and his birth is upon the material throughout all generations. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou without corruption bearest not the word, and thy truly fail told those behind thee. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the crowd in the imagination of their hearts. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without corruption bearest God's word, and my truly fail to most be magnified. Pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save 
save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Calling to remembrance our all, holy, immaculate, most blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, most holy, and our Savior, and all our life unto Christ our God. To be Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool. For he is holy. When thou hast entered one of the doors, worship as thou, O Master. Is fill thine apostolic choir with the unholy spirit. And having free peace of mind, thou verily distill them. The sons of men and the eighth day thereafter, thy womb is thine, and thy hand is thou display unto Thomas, with whom we cry, Our Lord and God, art thou O sovereign master. Leap for leap before joy and clap your hands, with gladness raise your voice in song. And cry, O strange and how wondrous are all thy works, O Christ, Savior, who hath shaped to tell in full the mighty deeds that thou hast wrought, who hast achieved our unity, our full agreement and concord, blended in one, in thy one church. Those words of hostile heresy have failed and vanished utterly. Remembrance of them hath perished, and with a great din and resounding. For as we now behold again, O pure virgin, blessed of God, thy temple beautifully adorned, and graced with venerable icons, we all are filled with great gladness. Power. O thou who wouldst endure the crush 
and the ball is dead, and it strides again from the dead. Give peace to our life, O Lord, for the Lord Almighty. Praise Him for His mighty act, praise Him according to His excellent greatness. O Thou who didst ease for of health, and raise man again from the dead by the resurrection. O Christ, make us worthy with your heart to praise and glorify Thee. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp. Glorify, glorify, thy divine condescension. We praise thee, O Christ, for thou wast born of a virgin that was not separated from the Father. Thou didst suffer as man and of thine own free will endure the cross. And thou didst rise again from the tomb, going forth as from a bridal chamber, that thou mightest save the world, O Lord, glory to thee. Praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with string instruments and organs. Now thy church rejoiceth in the earth, her bridegroom and fashioner, who didst will God befittingly. To save her from the to save her from the deceit and the fraud of our idols, by the precious blood joining her forever unto thee, O friend of man, and with joy she received the sacred restoration of the holy icons this holy day, and with joy she doth glorify. Present him thee with ardent faith. Praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Now thy church rejoiceth in thee, her fair bridegroom and fashioner. Who is will God be fitting thee to save her from the deceit and the fraud of idols? By the precious blood joining her forever unto thee. O friend of man, and with joy she hath received the sacred restoration of the holy icons this holy day. And with joy she doth glorify, praise and hymn thee with ardent faith. Arise, O my God, lift up thy hand, and forget not the humble. As we now restore the image of thy flesh to its place again, offering relative reverence, O Lord, we make manifest the most mighty mystery of thy dispensation, for thou didst not in fancy and mere thought appear as man is God opposing sons, but in the nature of the flesh and very truth was thus seen on earth, by which mystery, O friend of man, we are led up unto thy love. I will praise thee, O Lord, of my whole heart. I will show thy marvelous works. Lo, a day of gladness and of joy of heart hath appeared today. For there flashes forth lightning light, the bright shining radiance of the truest doctrines. Now the church of Christ weareth as her fairest ornament, the holy icons restored unto their place. And splendors of fair images of Christ his mother and all the saints. And a God-given unity is bestowed on all faithful souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Moses, sweet Savior, love in our And let this people and Elijah in a fasting close up the heavens. As for the Abraham, I do. Transgressing, O Serpent, wherefore do thy saints, O Savior, prepare us to 
to the world, let us sing praises to him that arose from the grave, the author of our life, for having by death destroyed them. You have given us victory and great mercy. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now endeavor unto ages. Of the ages. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Of the whole world, the good state of the holy churches of God, and the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for those who with faith, reverence, and fear of God enter therein. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Father and Metropolitan Samba, the Honorable Presbytery, the Diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Its presidents, the authorities, and armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city and for every city and countryside, and for the faithful who dwell therein, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by sea, by land, and by air, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. Call into remembrance all holy Immaculate, most blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, and us, each other, and all our life unto Christ our God. Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, unto ages of ages. Amen. The Lord is King and hath clothed himself with majesty. The Lord is robed; he is girded with strength. For he has established the world so that it shall never be moved. 
Unto thee we ascribe glory, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let the heavens and the earth praise Him. Thy glory. This is the day which the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I your image to venerate a good one, asking forgiveness of our sins, O Christ our God. For by thine own will thou didst ascend the cross in thy body, Thy creatures from the bondage of the enemy. Thou hast verily filled them with joy, since thou didst come, O Lord, Savior, to save the world. O Lord, my God, I will acknowledge thee forever. Thy pure image do we venerate, O good. Asking forgiveness of our sins, O Christ our God. For by thine own will thou didst ascend the cross in thy body to save thy creatures from the bondage of the enemy. Thou hast verily reigned, O will joy, since thou didst come, O our Savior.
save thy creatures from the bondage of the enemy. Thou hast verily filled all with joy, since thou didst come, O our Savior, to save the world. The free most great luminaries of the three sun divinity, have illumined all of the world with the rays of doctrines divine and true. They are the sweetly flowing rivers of wisdom, who with godly knowledge have watered all creation in clear and mighty streams. The great and sacred basil and the theologian wise Gregory, together with the renowned John, the famed Chrysostom of golden speech. Let us all who love their divinely wise words come together honoring them with hymns, for ceaselessly they offer entreaty for us to the Trinity. Spirit. 
<laughs> Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, for you are righteous in all things you have done for us. Wisdom. The reading from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Let us spit Brethren, by faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share real treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign enemies to flight, women received their dead by resurrection, some were tortured, refusing to re accept release, that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains, and in dens and caves of the earth. And in all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. and Aaron are among his priests. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They call on the Lord and he hears them. decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael said to Jesus, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. And he opened and he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the sun. Uh, 
of man. Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is ever shining. St. John the Evangelist, whose gospel we just read, uh, wrote letters to uh, the church. And I want to read just a section from the first letter of John. He says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes and which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, the life that was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be made full. In that short little passage, I think he says, we have seen or, or looked upon about five times in that one little passage. We have seen things. When, uh, when we speak of seeing things, we not only mean with our physical eyes, but we also talk about when, it, when we see something, we understand it, right? So seeing has this uh, wonderful experience for us that we, we physically see things, we spiritually see things, and we understand and know them. And as a result, we are able to participate in those things because we have seen them. Today, we celebrate the Sunday of Orthodoxy or the triumph of Orthodoxy. And in about mid 700s uh, early early 700s there began the iconoclast controversy where people began to look at the images that of the, the saints and of Christ and of the Theotokos as idolatry and they looked to the scriptures and they saw that in the scriptures God says you'll make no images and they said these things are idolatrous and we should take them down and thus began this controversy at first, it really centered around the idea of idolatry. And then St. John of Damascus showed that in fact, if it is idolatry, we have some problems because when Christ says in the 10 commandments to not have, to not make graven images, just a few chapters later, he says, well, make the cherubim on top of the mercy seat. And not only should you make statues of cherubim, you should uh, embroider them in the curtains, the veil of the temple of the tabernacle at that point. And so you have this contradiction, you're saying, well, he says no images, and then he tells you to make images. So is God contradicting himself? And the answer is no. St. John says, we offer only worship to God. And when you offer worship to something uh, physical, that, that becomes an idol, that becomes idolatry. But we don't worship icons. We venerate them. We give veneration to the person depicted in the icon. So he makes this distinction about the difference between worship and veneration. So in 787, 367 bishops got together to look at this question. And like I said, the, the issue of idolatry was settled fairly quickly. But then they began to ask questions about, well, what is the incarnation? What does it mean that Jesus became a human being? What does it mean that he took on our nature, that we have seen him, that we have heard him? that we have touched him, that even we take his body in the Eucharist. What does that mean? And they began to look at the incarnation. What does it mean that he became human for us, that God took on human nature? And they said, because Christ took on our nature and we have seen him and touched him and heard him, therefore icons are actually of help because they show us 
not only Christ and not only the one who was the God bearer, but also those who no longer they no longer live for themselves, but Christ lives in them. All of the saints are a depiction of Christ in his midst. They are an affirmation of the incarnation. And to remove them all would to bring into question whether Christ really became incarnate or not. And so you see how icons become an expression of the truth of Christian faith, that they are a proclamation that the incarnation really happened, that Christ really took on our nature and has redeemed it. From that council, uh, there is this statement. We define that holy icons should be exhibited in churches, on sacred vessels and liturgical vestments, on the walls and furnishings, in houses and along the roads, namely the icons of our Lord God Jesus Christ, that of Our Lady the Theotokos, those of the venerable angels, and those of all saintly people. Whenever these representations are contemplated, they will cause those who look at them to commemorate and to love their prototype. Christ became incarnate so that we could actually see him. And that in seeing him, come to see who he really is, that he is God incarnate. In the gospel reading from today, there is a beautiful sort of mosaic of seeing. Just before this, John the Baptist sees Jesus coming towards him and he says, look. The translation in English is behold, but it's the same word as look. Look, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He sees Jesus, but he sees the Son of God as well, and he proclaims him. And then later it says the next day, John took, stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold the Lamb of God. Do you see the Lamb of God? And one of the two who heard him was Andrew. And Andrew went and got Simon. And they went and they looked at him. They went and looked at him. And after they looked at him, Peter proclaims that he is the Messiah. And Jesus then looks back at Peter and says, you will be called Kephas, which means a stone. Greek is, Peter is Greek for stone as well. And then we begin with today's reading. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. He's down by the Dead Sea, uh, where he has experienced John the Baptist and Forerunner's uh, baptism. And now he is wanting to go back to Galilee, which is primarily a Gentile area. And he wants to go back. He goes and he finds Philip. He seeks him out and he says, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So you've got this little bitty village on the Sea of Galilee, and Andrew and Peter are both also from there. But before Philip follows him, Philip goes to Nathanael and says to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophet wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I, I still, I love that statement. It's so fun because on one hand, I think it's just true. Like the, the prophets do not declare that, that the Messiah will come from Nazareth. It says that he'll come from Bethlehem. And on the other hand, it's also, you know, Nazareth is not a well uh, reputed uh, village. It's, it has a terrible reputation. It is in some ways a, a model of the darkness that comes with death and the deception of sin. He does not know the light of God. And Jesus wants to go precisely there, calling people from that area to see his light. And Philip does not argue with him. How many of you get sucked into pointless arguments? That's like the McNeil specialty. We specialize in pointless arguments. He does not engage him. He does not argue. He just says, come and see. This is, I think, one of the most beautiful things about orthodoxy. We don't have to argue our way to coming to know Christ. We actually come to know Christ. Come and see. See for yourself. Christ will reveal himself to you. So Nathaniel, he decides to go. 
he doesn't tell us what he thinks, but he goes, Philip perhaps is, a, is enough presence uh, to just say, come and see that, that moves Nathaniel. Now listen to what happens next. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him. And before Nathaniel can say anything, he says to, to Nathaniel, behold, right, look and see, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. This statement is enough for Nathaniel to know, to be identified that Christ knows him, that he has seen him, not only his exterior, but his heart as well. He has seen him and known him. And Nathaniel answers, how do you know me? How do you know these things? And Jesus says, before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. This, if you read just the first couple of chapters of John, this vision goes back and forth, this light and darkness, the, the, the darkness of death and the deception of sin is overcome by the light and we begin to see and when we begin to see the true things in life we begin to lead lives that are worthy of that light that we, we bring our lives into conformity with what we have seen from this this one statement Nathaniel says rabbi you are the son of God you are the king of Israel now st. John Chrysostom notes that where Peter confesses Jesus as the son of God earlier uh, as the Messiah, he says, you are a rock, right? And here, Nathaniel, there seems to be something deficient in his statement, in his confession of faith. There seems to be something he needs more of. And Jesus answers him and is going to fill in and tell him what that more is. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Is that enough? You will see even greater things than these. You will see even greater things than these, and you will come to know the love and depth and infinite grace of our Father, and that I am truly the Son of God. Most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angel of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. In Genesis, Jacob sees the heavens opened up. He sees the Lord standing at the top of the ladder and calling down and the angels ascending and descending. And Jacob's response to this, seeing this vision in Genesis, he says, I didn't know the Lord was here, but now I do. And that is exactly what Jesus is saying to Nathaniel. What you are not sure of yet, you will come to see and know with certainty that the Lord indeed is in your midst. Brothers and sisters, we don't see all things at once. And sometimes we begin to see and understand, and sometimes we, we don't see. But we, we understand that when Jesus calls Nathaniel, he invites him to, to begin to see, and he tells him what he has seen, and then he begins to deepen his sight so that not only can Nathaniel see things visible, but he can begin to see things invisible that are not immediately apparent to our senses. The icons are indeed an affirmation that Christ has come in the flesh, that we may become like him, that we may be as he is, that we may be filled with the divine light of God, that theosis is a reality for us. The triumph of orthodoxy, the Sunday of orthodoxy, really began in the year 843. There was a second flare-up of the uh, of iconoclasm, and the Empress Theodora put that to rest by bringing in an icon of the Holy Theotokos into the Hagia Sophia, and there venerating it in 843. And we have celebrated this day ever since. Beautiful affirmation that Christ indeed has come in the flesh to save us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, who created heart in and have mercy.
down upon all thy works. Look upon thy servants, the catechumens, Robin, Dinthna, Demetrius, Andre, Corey, and Jackson, who have bowed their necks before thee and grant them the light yoke. Make them honorable members of thy holy church and make them worthy of the labor of regeneration and the forgiveness of sins and the robe of incorruption unto knowledge of thee, our true God, that with us they may glorify thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now endeavor unto ages of ages. Amen. As many as our catechumens depart, depart catechumens. As many as are of the faithful, again and yet in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O oh God, 
by thy grace.
Jessica, Elizabeth, Janice, Mary, Stephen, Irini, Theodora, Nicholas, Lucia, Juliana, Edward, John, Lucia, Christina, and her newborn babes, Emilia, and her unborn child, Patricia, the Hiramonk, Damascene, Mitchell, Linda, His Grace, Bishop John, his Grace Bishop Basil, Alexander, Clement, Lula, Kiki, and Nona. The Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, unto ages. Of ages. Your proud servants of God departed this life in the hope of resurrection unto life eternal. Especially the newly departed, His Holiness, Patriarch Neophyte. The newly departed Archpriest Anthony, Richard, Clyde, Protodeacon George, Andriana, and all your departed loved ones, the Lord God, remember in his heavenly kingdom, always now endeavor unto ages. Of Danger and 
necessity, let us praise the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. The Lord have mercy. Lift up 
our heart. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. And who is sufficient to speak of thy mighty acts, to make all thy praises to be heard, or to tell of all thy wonders in every season? O Master of all, Lord of heaven and earth, of all creation, both visible and invisible, who sitteth upon the throne of glory, and beholdest the depths, who art unoriginate, invisible, incomprehensible, uncircumscript, immutable, the Father of our Lord, the great God and Savior Jesus Christ, our hope who is the image of thy goodness, the seal of equal type, in himself showing forth thee the Father, the living word, the true God, the wisdom before all the ages, the life, sanctification, power, the true light, through whom the Holy Spirit was manifested, the spirit of truth, the gift of adoption, the pledge of the inheritance to come, the first fruits of eternal good things, the life-giving power, the fountain of sanctification by whom enabled every rational and intelligent creature doth serve thee and ascribe to thee perpetual praise. For all things are thy servants, yea, angels and archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many eyed cherubim praise thee. Round about thee stand the six winged seraphim with two that cover their faces. With two their feet and with two they fly, continually crying out to one another with unceasing praises, singing the triumphal hymn, shouting, proclaiming, and saying, Holy, 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 Heaven and Lord of judgment of God from paradise into this world and did turn him again to the earth from which he was taken providing for him the salvation of regeneration which is in thy Christ himself yet thou didst not turn away forever from thy creature whom thou hast made O good one neither didst thou forget the work of thy hands but thou didst visit him in diverse manners through thy tender mercies Thou didst send forth prophets, thou didst perform mighty works by the holy ones, who in every generation were well pleasing unto thee. Thou didst speak to us by the mouth of thy servants, the prophets, who foretold unto us the salvation which was to come. Thou didst give us the law as an aid, thou didst appoint guardian angels. And when the fullness of time was come, thou didst speak unto us through thy Son himself by whom also thou madest the ages, who being the brightness of thy glory and the express image of thy person and upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal to thee, the God and Father, but though he was God before all the ages, yet he appeared upon earth and dwelt among men and was incarnate of a holy virgin and emptied himself, taking on the form of a servant, becoming conformed to the body of our loneliness, that he might make us conformable to the image of his glory. 
For as by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, so it seemed good unto thy own begotten Son, who is in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, to be born of a woman, the holy dead, Logos, and of a virgin Mary, to be born under the law, that he might condemn sin in his flesh, that they who were dead in Adam might be made alive in him by Christ, and becoming a citizen of this world and giving commandments of salvation. He released us from the delusion of idols and brought us into the, a knowledge of thee, the true God and Father, having won us unto himself for his own people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and having purified us by water and having sanctified us by the Holy Spirit, he gave himself a ransom to death whereby we were held, sold into bondage under sin. And having descended into Hades through the cross that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the pains of death and rose again on the third day, making a way for all flesh unto the resurrection from the dead. For it was not possible that the author of life should be held by corruption, that he might be the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep the firstborn from the dead, that he might be in all things the first among all. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of thy majesty on high, and he shall come again to render unto every man according to his works. And he has left with us as memorials of his saving passion, these things which we have set forth according to his commandments. For when he was about to go to his voluntary and ever memorable and life-giving death, and the night in which he gave himself up to the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and immaculate hands, and when he had shown it unto me, unto thee, the God and Father, and given thanks and blessed it and hallowed it and broken. He gave it to his holy disciples and the apostles, saying, Take it, this is my God which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sin. Amen. In like manner, having taken the cup of the fruit of the vine and mingled it and given thanks and blessed it and hallowed it, he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. this third day in human and resurrection <coughs> from the dead is his ascension into heaven and sitting at the right hand of thee the God and Father in his glorious and fearful second coming and offering unto thee thine own of thine own in behalf of all and for all. We praise we bless
and as for us partakers of the one bread and of the cup, do thou unite all to one another unto communion of the one Holy Spirit, and grant that no one of us may partake of the holy body and blood of thy Christ unto judgment or unto condemnation, but rather that we may find mercy and grace with all the holy ones who through the ages have been well pleased in unto thee, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, creatures, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith, especially our all holy, immaculate, most blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos, and ever virgin of the churches to cease, quench the ragings of hostile nations, speedily destroy the power of thy Holy Spirit, uprisings of heresies, receive us all into thy kingdom, showing us to be sons of the light and sons of the day, and grant unto us thy peace and thy love, O Lord our God, for all things hast thou given unto us. And grant us 
with one mouth and with one heart to glorify and praise thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. And with thy spirit. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Precious gifts which have been spread forth and sanctified. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our God, who loveth mankind, having received now upon his holy, most heavenly, and ideal altar, as a fragrance of spiritual sweetness, will send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Asking for the unity of the faith, the union of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and each other all our life unto Christ our God. Through the O Lord. O Master, that with boldness and without condemnation you may dare to call upon me, Heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to the rest of the people. Mine is the kingdom, power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Peace be to all and to thy Neither will I be the 
life and faith, life and custody, the mother and the Lord in thy kingdom, not into judgment, nor into condemnation, we are partaking of thy holy mysteries, O Lord, but into the healing of soul and body. Amen. Thank you. 
thanksgiving is in earth and heaven. Out 
showing forth we are proclaiming as Father Michael said, the incarnation, the truth of the gospel through the holy icons. So we're holding them up high. Uh, the, the service is on the, uh, at the back of the church in the North text. You're going to need on page four, the Synodicon of Orthodoxy, the Proclamation of Faith. We, uh, you sh we say that together. So hopefully you can have that in front of you. Uh, when we come back in, inside the church, we're going to go around the outside of the church. We're going to stop at each corner of the church, starting with this corner. And uh, we have some prayers at each corner. And then we process to the next stop. So we're proclaiming to the four corners of the world our faith.
and life-giving cross by the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven at the supplication of the honorable glorious prophet forerunner and baptist john of the holy glorious laudable apostles the holy glorious and right victorious martyrs of our venerable and god-bearing fathers who shone in the ascetic life of the three holy hierarchs Bays of the great Gregor, the theologian, and John Chrysostom, the patrons and protectors of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, you are human and, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God. Have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Yes, yes ever shall be. Thank you, altar servers and choir. 
collection today um, for our seminary students, those who are likely preparing uh, to be future priests, uh, to carry on the faith. I remember when I was in seminary and the archdiocese would give us like I don't remember, maybe a stipend of a hundred bucks a month. It was nice. Um, <coughs> so, but we need to support our future priests and pastors um, who are going to take over from me. Um, do we have a basket for that? <clears throat> Let's see. Um, you know about the retreat. We're going to have Father John Bethancourt. He's a wonderful speaker. Um, very easy to listen to. You don't want to stop listening. Um, and he's going to be here April 5th through the 7th and teach us about transforming the heart. So we look forward to that. The, the schedule, there are schedules in the narthex there if you want to pick one up. Otherwise, I've sent it by email a couple times. Um, today, um, normally we would have great vespers for the Feast of the Annunciation in the evening, but since the feast day falls on a Monday, I decided we'll just stick around and do the Great Vespers, uh, I don't know, around 12.31, probably closer to 12.30. We'll ring the bell. When you hear the bell, it's time. Um, And then the Divine Liturgy will be tomorrow at 8 a.m. for the, the Feast of the Annunciation. We will not have the Great Compline on Monday evening uh, because of the feast day uh, and the liturgy that morning. All right. We have a few uh, name days and birthdays. Kula, Kula's uh, name day is tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Um, and Daniel and Barbara Bores have a anniversary on the 25th, a wedding anniversary. 52 years. 52. We have um, half of the team. <laughs> So, uh, and then Julia Macrina Shanbor has a birthday on Tuesday. I haven't gotten anything yet. <laughs> Could you guys come forward? We didn't get to sing to Basil last week. He wasn't here. It was his birthday last Sunday. Yeah, please. Who? Oh, your birthday last Sunday? Come on up. Hey, guys. Come up. <laughs> Why do we do this every time? <laughs> yes, Gideon will be fine. Um, I think that's it for this week. I'm going to ask Father Michael to, and Florence. Yeah, Florence, you're on here. The 29th. Every year. <laughs> Grant, O Lord, a long life, health, salvation, and furtherance in all good things to thy servants, Coria Macrina, Elizabeth, Daniel and Barbara, Kulangeliki, uh, Basil, 
Gideon, and grant them many blessed years. God grant you many years. God grant you many years. God grant you many, many, many years. Okay, um, we'll say our prayers of Thanksgiving and then we will dismiss. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. I thank thee, O Lord thy God, that thou hast not rejected me in sin. Thou hast vouchsafed to me to become a communicant of thy holy things. I thank thee that thou hast vouchsafed to me, the end worthy, to partake of thy immaculate and heavenly gifts. O oh, Master, who loves mankind, you just will thy fresh and rise again, and just bestow upon us days that dread and life giving mysteries, for the benefit and sanctification of our souls and bodies. Grant that they may be for me also unto the healing of both soul and body, unto the averting of everything contrary thereto, unto the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart, unto the peace of my spiritual powers, and the faith and the shame that dwell unfeigned, unto the increase of wisdom, unto the fulfillment of thy commandments, unto growth in thy divine grace, and the attainment of thy kingdom, that preserved by them in thy holiness, I may ever remember thy grace, and henceforth live not unto myself, but unto thee, our master and benefactor. And thus, when the sight of it is ended in the hope of eternal life, I may attain unto everlasting rest, where the voice of those who keep festival is unceasing, and the delight of those who behold the ineffable beauty of thy countenance is boundless. For thou art the true desire and unutterable, unutterable joy of those who love thee, O Christ our God, and all creation, him and thee forever. Amen. O Master Christ our God, King of the ages and maker of all things, I thank thee for all the good things which thou hast bestowed upon me, and for this partaking of thine immaculate and life giving mysteries. Wherefore I pray thee, who art good and lovest mankind, keep me under thy protection, and in the shadow of thy wings, and hath unto me with a pure conscience, and even unto my last breath, to partake of thy holy things, unto forgiveness of sins, and unto life everlasting. For thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness, the giver of good things, and unto thee we ascribe glory, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O thou who willing us give thy flesh to me as food, thou who art a fire consuming the unworthy. Consume me not to my creative road, to rather cast all my body parts, and to all my joints may run into my heart. Burn thou the thorns of all my transgressions, cleanse my soul, and hallow thou my thoughts. Make firm my knees and my bones likewise, enlighten as one my five senses. Establish me wholly in thy fear, ever shelter me, guard, and keep me from every soul corrupting deed and word. Cleanse me, purify, and control me, adorn me, teach, and enlighten me. Show me to be a dwelling place of thy spirit, and in no wise the dwelling place of sin. That from me thy habitation, through the, through the entrance of thy communion, every evil deed and every passion may flee us from fire. As intercessors I bring to thee all the sanctified, both the leaders of the bodiless powers, thy four and thy wise apostles, and besides these, thine immaculate and pure mother, do thou receive their prayers of my Christ, who art compassionate, and make thy servant to be a child of the light. For thou alone, O good Lord, art the sanctification and splendor of our souls. And to be as God and Master, day by day we all, we all ascribe glory. May thy holy body, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, be unto me for life eternal, and thy precious blood unto forgiveness of my sins. May this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness, and at thy fearful second coming, make me the sinner worthy to stand at the right hand of thy glory, through the intercessions of thine all-immaculate Mother, and of all thy sins. Amen. O all holy lady Theotokos, light of my darkened soul, my hope, my shelter, my refuge, my consolation, and my joy, I thank thee that thou hast accounted me worthy, although unworthy, to partake, to be a partaker of the immaculate body and precious blood of thy Son. But do thou who gavest birth to the true light, enlighten the spiritual eyes of my heart. O thou who didst bear the fountain of immortality, enlighten thou me, who I dead in sin. O compassion-loving Mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me, and grant me compunction and, con and contrition of heart, and humility in my thoughts, and deliverance from the bondage of my vain imaginings, and account me worthy, even unto my last breath, to receive without condemnation the sanctification of the immaculate mysteries, and to the healing of both soul and body, and, up, and grant unto me tears of repentance and confession, that I may him be and glorify thee all the days of my life, for blessed and glorified art thou unto all ages. Amen. Lord, and now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, the light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. 
Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. All the Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for our own sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now endeavor and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thy sound hath gone out into all the earth, for it hath re received thy word. Thereby didst thou teach divine doctrine, make clear the nature of existence, and order the habits of men. O thou of royal priesthood, venerable Father Basil, beseech Christ our God to grant, to grant us great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou didst appear as an unshakable foundation of the Church, dispensing an inviolate dominion to all mortals, and sealing it with thy doctrines, O revealer of heavenly things, venerable Basil, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. The church is revealed to all as a brilliantly lit heaven, leading the faithful in the way of light. Standing therein, we cry aloud, make firm the foundation of this house, O Lord. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than the cherubim, more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Thou who without corruption didst bear God the word, and actually God took us who magnify thee. Us, Father, in the name of the Lord. God be gracious to us and to us. May he show the light of his countenance on us and be merciful unto us. Amen. Glory to the O Christ our God and our hope. Glory to Thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of His all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, of our Father among the saints, Basil the Great, Archbishop of Caesarea, in Cappadocia, whose divine liturgy we celebrated, and of all the saints, have mercy upon us and save us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind through the prayers of our holy fathers. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, bless the food and drink of thy servants. Give us strength in this period of fasting and grant to us good repentance for you are blessed now and ever unto ages of Amen. Remember that we're taking our collection. Our parish is required to um, give at least $250. Um, they have a floor for us to hit. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah, I see. 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 I see